one shot is all you get. Crimson Trace rifle scopes help you take aim when that shot comes. Purpose built with maximum features, versatility, and a lifetime warranty. Crimson Trace will elevate your performance in moments that matter. Want to shoot off your mouth? This is the place. It's Gun Talk. Call 866-TALK-GUN. All right, Tom Gresham here. It is Gun Talk. Glad that you could be with us. We are actually uh, live today, remote from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're at, well, just about to start the SHOT Show in Las Vegas, the Shooting, Hunting, and Outdoor Trade Show. It's the big industry trade show. We're at uh, SIG Range Day. They're introducing all sorts of new things, showing off things, letting people shoot some cool guns. Uh, a big uh, Gun Talk welcome. It's our chance to welcome uh, KMZQ AM670 right here in Las Vegas. Just picked up Gun Talk, and we are really happy. Happy to, uh, to be on KMZQ. We appreciate the folks there. We're uh, sitting there during the break. I'm listening. There are a lot of guns going off out there. Uh, joining me right now is uh, Patrick Hanley. He is the uh, rifle product manager for SIG. What are you guys shooting out here, Patrick? we got all kinds of stuff out there, Tom. There's, uh, we have our belt-fed machine gun. We have all of our uh, other rifle line. We have our pistols. Uh, and then we are introducing here at the show our new cross-bolt action rifle down at the long range. So. A lot of and, stuff. And some people have seen the photos of the cross. It is, at first glance, you first look at it, you go, oh, AR, an AR platform. And then you stop and go back and look, oh, wait, it's, no, that's not AR. It's got a bolt. It's a bolt gun. Exactly. So where did this thing come from? It, 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 SIG is not known as a bolt gun company historically. No, I no. mean, pretty much anything we've done in the past has been from one of our sister companies that we've worked with. But one of the things that I, I don't think a lot of people know about uh SIG is we do have a lot of people who work here, both in engineering and our special weapons groups that are former military snipers. Uh, basically, this is like we have more bolt action people than we have anything else in the company. Oh, really? And uh, you're you're looking at a project that like literally was like Thanksgiving dinner at a table with 20 guys in a room and all of us hashing it out, trying to figure out this guy wants this, this guy wants this. And I'll be honest with you, it was the best project I've ever worked on because of that, because everybody had a say in it and there was stake in the company from everyone to have that input to be able to say, hey, this is the rifle we would have all wanted. And the reason it's called the cross is because some of us that were in that room were more focusing it towards hunting. Other guys were like Daniel, who you were talking to earlier. Right. Daniel Horner's a precision guy. He knows that world. Right. And so we're we're taking a gun and we're tying the two together. We're saying as a hunter, this is what we all want. And then as a precision shooter, these are what these guys want. Right. And we put that into a package to be able to have a product that does both. And that's where the the name cross came from. It's a hybrid gun that it's allows a, it's, you to It's a both. crossover. Exactly. It's, it's ultra, it, it looks like a chassis gun. Right. I've heard that term used several times since we brought it out, but it's a forged aluminum receiver that's all one piece. There's no action dropped in there. We designed every single part and component on this gun from the trigger to the to the receiver to the stock. Everything was designed by us. There's not one piece on that gun that we're buying from anybody. We wanted to build something from the ground up so that we could get the weight down, so that we could get the, the gun thinner and fold thinner. We did all this stuff because we had the intent of making sure that it met all the things that we wanted rather than using somebody else's action and using somebody else's sure. components. We wanted it to do all the things that we well, wanted. You're it having to compromise when you're using somebody else's product and build onto that. This way you build it the way you want. You mentioned something in there about getting the weight down, and that's one of the things that surprised me. What's this thing weigh? It weighs six and a half pounds. Six and a half pounds before you put a scope on it. Correct. Uh, it's got a folding stock. Yep. So now it becomes really short yep. and really lightweight. And for somebody who's going up and down those mountains on a hunt, you could literally stick it in a backpack. 25 inches folded. And we, we, we were a very, that is exactly what we we're trying to accomplish is for the guy who's out hunting in the backcountry, one of the, the trickiest things is, especially if you put a suppressor on there, right. you have a, a full length stock, That's you long. put that thing on your back. Yeah. You're banging off the back of your legs. You're hitting every tree branch you walk under. And we really wanted something that would truly be a pack gun. So even if you're not putting it in your backpack, it's the length of your backpack. You're not going to go above or below. Ah, sure. So you have something that's the size of your pack and you're not hitting everything as you're walking through the woods. It gives you, a, it gives a solution too for the suppressor guy because uh, some of the shorter barrels that we have for this gun, a lot of times when you have a 24 inch barrel and you add a seven inch suppressor, you're, you're getting it's a really quite the, unwieldy. You're, and you're trying to climb through brush and do all this stuff and it's getting hung up on everything. Exactly. And it's just, it's a 
pain. Uh, well, you mentioned the barrel length. What are we looking at here? So in 6.5 Creedmoor, we're doing an 18-inch. And then in 308, we're doing a 16-inch. And then in our new 277 Sig Fury, which is really the basis around the short barrel, uh, that's our hybrid ammunition. We're doing a 16-inch on that, too, which uh, brings you the magnum velocities with that same short barrel. So you're not giving anything up. Okay, so the 277 Fury, 277 being a 270, people go, if they're old enough, they remember Jack <laughs> O'Connor and the 270 cartridge, 270 Winchester, great hunting cartridge. You're getting those velocities and more, but out of a 16-inch barrel instead of having to go to a 24-inch barrel. Correct. With this hybrid case technology that we're using, it has a stainless base on the bottom. It allows us to maintain pressures up to 80,000 PSI. So what we're able to do is create those higher pressures to increase the velocity. So with a 140-grain bullet out of that short 16-inch barrel, you're still getting 3,000 feet per second. So exactly like you said, you're getting a magnum cartridge. You're getting a 270 out of it. What could you do if you use that same technology instead of applying it to a standard cartridge, apply it to a Magnum cartridge? There is some fun things we're already working on and playing with, and I will tell you this, there, this Sig Fury, so the, the 277 all started with the military. This was their, right. their basis to say we want a 308 base case that allows us to shoot 3,000 feet per second at a 16 inch. We want to lighten the, basically lighten the belts on the, the uh, machine guns. Oh, so okay. That was the the thinking behind exactly. it. Exactly. They okay. want they wanted the the power, but they did not want the weight. So we were doing it for that purpose. Um, but that technology that we're using, it's it's capable in any case. So we've already gone to the extent of putting this in other cartridges, and we're working on several different cartridges coming down the road. This machine gun, I keep hearing going off out here. What is this thing? You're hearing a 338 Norma that's out there, and that that is a very 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 cool gun. That that technology that's in those bell feds is they've lightened these things by over. 10 pounds in some cases on a couple of these. So between the ammunition and the lightweight gun, if, right. you, if you're a machine gunner that carry the 240, you'd be a much happier man when you feel what we got coming here. <laughs> it makes quite a difference. And I mean, you're getting stunning velocities out of it, but let's go back to the cross because it's available. You don't have to get it in the Fury if you say, yeah, but I, I like a standard caliber. Correct. Yeah, we have it in 6.5 Creedmoor. We have it in 308. What we did was with those shorter barrels, like I said, we did want to make it so that people who wanted to shoot suppressed had that capability. But I worked very closely with Daniel Horner and several other guys, and we were doing a lot of ballistic testing. And when you start getting into some of the testing for uh, what you're doing with 308 and 6.5, if you look at a lot of our military, they're carrying around 16 and 18 inch barrels in their AR-10 platforms. Right, true. You're, you start to lose a lot of your velocity gains when you start to get to that point, and it's minimal gains, and you're mm -hmm. carrying extra weight. So we were trying to get it so that we were getting the, the maximum amount of powder burn before you start to drop off on velocity gain so that you're not carrying a super huge barrel with you. And if you're a suppressor guy, like we were running the 10 baffle titaniums on that thing, you're adding four or five inches, you're making it hearing safe, and it basically makes it so that you have a still a compact package. You're not carrying a super long broomstick. You mentioned suppressors several times, and I know the military is using suppressors a lot now, mm -hmm. but I ain't personally, I'm starting to see more hunters using suppressors. And that, I was surprised by that at first, but then you think, well, why not? Why wouldn't you, right? This is the goal of my life now. So I've gotten so many people in the last couple of years that go out hunting with us. We brought a bunch of people out this year. We took them out. And when people experience it for the first time, they're like, why haven't I been doing this forever? I mean, right. between the, you know, when you watch, when you shoot at a deer or an elk and nothing leaves the field. I mean, the amount of money we all spend on scent-free products and lack of, you know, trying to, to minimize your impact. And we go out and blast off a 30 out six and every deer in the woods now knows what's going on. Right. The, uh, the amount of reduction of impact, the amount of just everything, your own ears, the things that it does for you. And people start to see that. Plus they don't realize you're getting that velocity gain. You're getting that, not just the noise reduction, but you're getting accuracy. What do you, mean, so what do you mean you're getting velocity gain? Oh, we're, the suppressors that we're doing, we get velocity gains out of the suppressors as we're, when you put it up a, a versus a non-suppressed model, really? you're getting velocity gains. Yeah, and accuracy is probably the most impressive. Our accuracy on almost every one of our guns significantly improves, sometimes as much as a half an inch with some of the suppressors that we use. I mean, there's so many benefits wow. to the suppressor that a lot of hunters in the past, and part of that is... It's a, it's a threaded barrel thing sometimes more than anything. A lot of people are carrying around, you know, their, their older rifles that don't have a threaded barrel. Right. But more and more people, more companies are coming out with threaded barrels on stuff because people are seeing the value in it. The cross comes threaded? It comes threaded with our taper lock on it. You can use our suppressor with the taper or you can use our adapter and use anybody else's suppressor as well. 
but it's yeah I, I i am super excited about the future for you get wound up when you start talking about that don't you i, I really do because <laughs> when i see the smile on people's face because so many hunters you know us as shooters we get exposed to it from day one when you're working in gun companies right but most hunters have they they see it and they think of it as more of an ar thing right and and when you get out and you go hunting for the first time with one of these things and you shoot it the the pleasant experience of it and sitting at the range with your friends and having conversations with no... What's my shooting? Yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's so right. many benefits. Hold that thought here. I'm going to take a quick break here. I want to come back. I do want to talk a little bit more about suppressors, particularly for hunters, because there's, I think there's one or two, maybe three things that people don't think about when they think about that, or maybe misconceptions about suppressors. We'll talk about that as well, all right? All right. All right. Uh, we're at the uh, SIG range day. We're uh, talking with Patrick Hanley from SIG Sour, and we'll be right back after these messages. Brownells.com is your home for all things firearms. Looking for a retro rifle? How about the BRN 180 or 180S? Named one of SHOT Show's best products of 2019. Visit Brownells.com for guns, ammo, reloading equipment, or anything you need to customize your firearm. And enjoy the industry's only guaranteed forever satisfaction policy. To stay up to date with the latest and best deals from Brownells, text BRN to 556-223. Visit guntalk.com slash win to enter Gun Talk's Start the Year with SIG giveaway. Four grand prize winners will receive one of the following. The new SIG Sauer Cross bolt-action precision rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor with an 18-inch barrel and a two-stage match trigger. SIG's BDX system with the Kilo 1600 rangefinder and a Sierra A3 4.5 to 14 power rifle scope to use with the Applied Ballistics Data BDX smartphone app. The P320X5 Legion 9mm pistol with three 17 round mags. Or the SIG P320X full pistol with Romeo 1 Pro Open Reflex Red Dot Sight. No state restrictions for the SIG Cross Rifle and the BDX system. Winners pay taxes and all awarded prizes. For multiple chances to win, enter now through February 14th at guntalk.com slash win. That's guntalk.com slash win. Since 1994, Crimson Trace has defined and built the laser sighting category through design, innovation, and performance. With an obsession to create best-in-class electro-optics, Crimson Trace now offers a full line of lasers, lights, reflex sights, red dot sights, and rifle scopes for tactical and sport applications. Most Crimson Trace products include free batteries for life, and all scopes are backed by a lifetime warranty. Find yours at your local dealer or at crimsontrace.com. If only you could hear what goes on during the uh, commercial breaks here. <laughs> talking with uh, Patrick uh, Hanny from Six Hour. Uh, Patrick, we're talking about the cross rifle, and uh, we ought to just touch on that for a second, because you mentioned that we were talking with some of the other folks from uh, the Electro Optics Division of SIG, and they've got the BDX system. That's actually available with a full package on the cross rifle. Correct. We're doing what we call the sync system, and basically what it is is a lot of people have heard about the, the BDX technology, um, and when you get a BDX optic and you mount it, you mount it to, you program it to your caliber, you do all that stuff. We're doing a a scoped package. So essentially, where so many people nowadays are going into box stores and places like that, and they're buying a scope package the week before the season, that gives you a solution that your scope is already mounted, but it doesn't do the legwork for you. What the BDX sync kit does is when you get that and you get the ammo that we pre-program it with, which is our ammo in the store, mm -hmm. you take that and you go to the range, you shoot it 100 yards, now your BDX system is automatically linked now for you and you're lethal out to distance as far as 800 yards. So you buy the rifle, it already has the scope mounted to it, Yep. you get the ammo that's packaged with that. You and the range finder. And the range finder. Yep. You go in and just shoot it sighted in 100 yards, get yep. your scope sighted in, and now the range finder's talking to the scope which and everything's set up, ready to go. Basically, you range it, you use the aiming dot, and you're going to get your deer. You're good to go. And that's the thing is so many people, especially like if you if you live in parts of the country where you travel out west, not a lot of us get a place where we can shoot six, 700 yards. Yeah, good point. And it gets difficult. So having the ability to have this, it, it makes people, it, it makes for more ethical shots. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about, 
uh, how technology is taking away a lot of the stuff. But to me, you know, being a person, I've spent a lot of time in the woods and I've seen a lot of people. You don't always stop people from making a long shot just because you're you're telling them that, hey, this may not be the distance you're good at. They're going to take the shot. Exactly. So you give them the ability to, to make the to shot. To make the shot, an ethical shot that's going to be accurate. And that's all programmed into the system to be able to allow them to shoot out to further distances. Very cool. Yeah. All right, we were talking about suppressors before, and that was when you know you got all excited about that. <laughs> During the break, I mentioned something. It occurred to me that a lot of people who say, "Yeah, I've, I've shot suppressors," or "My buddy's got a suppressor," chances are they're shooting it on a semi-automatic rifle. If they're shooting on a rifle at all, it's probably an AR. Yes. And we're talking about using it on a bolt action. Talk about the difference. So the the big thing is like you know when people think of that, they think of like 300 blackout, subsonic, super super quiet. But what a what what a, a suppressor does do for you, like I mentioned, beyond increasing the accuracy, it obviously reduces the noise. But it, it it makes the rifle it makes the rifle so much better in so many different ways. And one of them is just you just need to be hearing safe. And and what that does is you don't need to have a maximum you know seven eight inch long really big uh, titanium you're or steel. You're not trying to make it silent. No, you're, you're doing it. You know, it's, it's one of those things that always amazed me is I spent some time over in Germany when I worked for uh, another company w with rifles over there. You don't, you're not allowed to not have a suppressor when you hunt. <laughs> you know, they, they, they buy them in the store like they're candy. It's it's right. so much easier to purchase a suppressor over there it's, because it's they... It's like, you know, it's shrink wrapped. It's on the, a pegboard. On, you just pull it off. Here's your suppressor. Exactly. And so when people see the way that we hunt over here, it's like, why would you guys not hunt with suppressors? And, and I think people, as they use it, they see that value now. People that are people that are trying it for the first time are like, "This is incredible." You know, I it, it's it's so much better for the pe for people around you. It's better for it's better for everything. I mean, it's it's healthier for the shooter. I liken it to when muzzle brakes really started coming out. Yep. And everybody wanted to use a muzzle brake, and they were loud. And I made the mistake. I shot a 300 Magnum with a muzzle brake on an elk hunt without any hearing protection. Yep. In one shot. And it really hammered my hearing. I mean, yep. like, seriously. So at, the, at that point, I said, okay, I am never hunting with a muzzle brake again. I'm not going to do it. I understand they reduce recoil, all of that. It's just too freaking loud. It literally does damage your hearing. And that's a one-way deal. You never get that back. Correct. Well, if that's the case, fast forward that, then why wouldn't you continue that to make it even quieter? Mm-hmm which is the whole suppression thing. Of course, people still have to put up with the legis the regulations and all the stuff and you know it takes it's $200 tax and it's you know a year or whatever it takes now to get a suppressor. Yep. Um, but once you've done that, you have it. You have it. And and for especially for a bolt gun guy, I mean whether you go with a titanium can, an Inconel can, you're not going to burn it up with a bolt gun. Right. You're going to have this thing for the rest of your life. I mean, it, it's really, and you brought up something too, Tom, is that, that a lot of people don't talk about is the recoil reduction. Um, one of the things that is a major benefit of suppressors on a bolt gun, like we had a lot of people shooting this cross with the suppressor on it. Right. And they're like, this thing doesn't have any kick at all. And then we take it off, especially in like the, the Fury, and you'd feel a little bit more of that recoil. It does significantly reduce the recoil, and we've tested it as much as most compensators on the market. You're getting that same recoil reduction out of having that suppressor on And, and, and also a factor in all of that is some of the perceived recoil is the muzzle blast that comes exactly. back and hits you. And you can't negate that. You can't, like, make that a small part of it because it's part of what you feel. Exactly. So when you shoot, you get this big old blast of, of stuff in your face. Well, with the can on there, you don't have that going exactly. on anymore. Exactly. Exactly. It's healthier. It's, it's, just it's a better in it's so a more many pleasant, ways. Yeah, you know, it's a... Why aren't more hunters using them? So a very good man who works with us here that you've met several times, John Hollister, sure. told me he spent more time being an advocate for suppressors he's than a, anybody in this industry. Yeah, he's the Travelocity known with the machine gun. That's exactly what he is. <laughs> and and his, his take to me, which made perfect sense, is I asked him that when I got here, like, Tom, I mean... I, I, I've been a hunter forever, and I've never been exposed to these when I right. first started, you know, coming to SIG. And he's like, it, this is really, Patrick, it, it comes down to threaded barrels. There's so many people that have legacy bolt guns that don't have a threaded barrel on it. But like I said, one of the things that's been so much better in the last 10 years is all these bolt gun companies, not just us, they're putting guns out with the threaded barrels on right. them now, realizing that people want that capability now. So as that increases the other side will increase and more people will start to try suppressors and realize the value of them. But that's really, I, to me, I think that is the biggest thing that has kept the hunter away from it for a while is there were so many bolt guns for so many years that just did not have the capability to put a suppressor on or you had to go to your gunsmith and get him to thread your barrel, which to a lot of people is a lot of work.
you're probably, I'm just thinking out loud now, you're probably going to need a generational shift. Correct. Because you got folks who are my age who grew up with, this is how a rifle looks. It's got this nice, beautiful, slim barrel. It goes all the way to the end. Now you're going to thread it. Well, that's going to make it ugly. Now you're going to put a big old can on it. Now it's even making it uglier. And it's the practical, what actually works versus the what I grew up with. Correct. And so, but now you've got... All these people come out of the military, and they have experience with cans. Exactly. And, and really, even for the people who don't, all you have to do is have that one experience with yeah. them. They shoot it once, and they're like, how come I didn't do this my whole life? Everybody does the same thing. It's like, wow. Yep. You know, they, shoot, they, really, they turn around and look at you and smile. Yep. And then they go, wow. And then they say, <laughs> can I shoot it again? Yep. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it's what they always do. It gets to the point with us, because we shoot so much, obviously, especially at the academy and stuff, and everything is always suppressed, right. that when I go to a gun range now with just my family and I shoot, I'm like, who's this offensive guy over here firing this <laughs> hey, this, this really loud gun? Hey, you jerk. Put a hand on that thing. What's <laughs> yeah, exactly. wrong with you? Exactly. No, it, it, it has a major impact on, it, it's just for enjoyment even for people. Like so many people, when they go to the range and they shoot suppressed, they stay longer, they shoot more. They, they it, It's just a much more enjoyable experience. And if you're going to introduce somebody to shooting, they're going to have a better time. Exactly. They're not going to have that blast, that recoil, all the yep. rest of it. It's just, it's more pleasant. They're going to say, hey, I like this. This is fun. Absolutely. You're 100% on. You know, and, uh, but the idea of using it for hunting, I just, the more I think about it, I'm more thinking, yeah. And it, I've seen, you know, you got these guys out there and they got these huge, long, yep. freaking rifles. It looks like you know, they got a shovel on their back yep. out there with a can on it. Now you got a folding stock on the cross. Yep. You got a shorter barrel. Yep. And you're going, yeah, I could, I could hunt with this. I mean, when we, first time we saw the cross, I just went, yeah, that's a hunting rifle. Yep. That's a, you know, a six and a half pound folding stock, short, short barrel hunting rifle. That's what that is to be. It is. I think that it, you, you mentioned cultural shifts and what people perceive hunting rifles as. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're seeing, you know, there's so much technology going into hunting clothing and all these other things in the, in the hunting side. And bolt actions have stayed very similar for several years. Right. So our goal with this was like, yeah, it looks different. Yeah, it feels different. But when you take it out and you see all the advantages to it, it exceeds that. And you, this will be the look of the next... Next, when people start seeing bolt guns for the future, they're going to be like, that is what a hunting rifle looks like. Is the cross out now? The cross will be available to be purchased in April. In April. Excellent. So before you know it. Patrick, thank you so much. This thank was, you, This Tom. was a real pleasure. Now we got to go out and shoot something. Yes, we do. <laughs> we'll shoot some guns now and we'll go out and do a little deer hunting or something <laughs> yeah, a little I later. Like we'll that. absolutely do that. All right, don't go far, folks. I'm Tom Gresham. We're at the uh, SIG Range Day. We're having a bunch of fun here. 866-TALK-GUN. We're open lines for you right now. We'll keep talking. You keep reloading. Here's Tom. All right, back with the 866 Talk Gun. Glad that uh, we're able to chat with you right now. We're uh, in Las Vegas, and we're welcoming our new uh, affiliate right here in Las Vegas, KMZQ AM 670. Very cool. Uh, Ryan and KJ have joined us again because you guys have been out cruising, looking at stuff. All right, I'm, I'm inside. I'm not able to go out there and play and see what's going on. And I keep hearing this really, really loud noise. Like, <laughs> oh, maybe like a machine gun yeah. or something. Have you guys talked about that one yet? Just a, a little bit. Did you see it going off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's cool. It's the Did, do, can MG338. We get, can, we get, can we get one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> MG338. So it's, and I'm not, a, I'm not a military guy, but it kind of falls between the 240 which is a 308, right? And the M2, which is a 50, 50 cal. cal. So this is shooting a 338 Norma. 338 yes. Norma. Right. Yeah, and that's that was requested by uh, the military. So they're, I don't, you know, there's a lot of process in trying to get this stuff into the military sure. hands. But I guess U.S. SOCOM has purchased a handful. You guys have preliminary tests. The, the, I guess the, the gun itself is lighter, and then, of course, the ammo yeah. is much lighter than yeah. a 50 cal. Yeah, and it, but it performs ballistically almost like a 50 cal. And actually, he was saying that for, of course, this is specific for military use, there are certain things that it can do that a 50 cal won't, like milita uh, armor piercing and things like ah, that. Right. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. They actually have, they can swap the barrel out in about 10 seconds. <laughs> if that. <laughs> if that. And they've got one with uh, with a suppressor already on there. And it's this big, it looks like a Coke can. Literally, it's about that 
wide and like that a, long. Like a two liter? You know? No, no, like oh. a like a 12 ounce can of Coke. Really? About yeah. that size. Okay. But it really works. It works. It, it works. works. It's impressive. But it's volume, you know, it's a big fat thing. Sure. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, we saw that. That was fun. It sounds cool too. Oh, well, especially when you're shooting up against a mountain, and then uh, you get oh, the reverb yeah. back, back. Oh yeah, you get the echo coming back. I mean, even in here, I mean, I don't know if it's going out over the radio, but it's like you can feel that bass that thump, 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 yeah, thump, yeah, thump, 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 shaking the whole building here. Well, and and another thing that's about to happen here in about 30 minutes is a big demonstration they have with their shooting team. Yes. So you've got Max Michelle, champion mm -hmm. pistol shooter. Yep. You got Daniel Horner, champion three gunner. Right. And Lena. Right. Lena Mitchell. And Lena is champion of all things. She, she's a super uh, <laughs> three gunner herself. Three gunner. Yep. Yeah, but the three of them are going to compete. They're oh. going to gonna use the cross rifle, bolt, bolt action? action gun, yes. okay. which Bax is like not the bolt action guy. He's like, this is totally rigged. I can't. <laughs> this is but uh, they're going to use the bolt Max action. Max is trying to do a mag drop. Out yeah. right. the, you know, they're no. going to do an AR, and then they're going to do pistols, and they're going to race. So they're they're hoping it kind of evens out of everybody's skill sets, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if I'm handicapping, I'm giving it to Daniel. Yes. He's kind of a... Because he's a PRC guy, too. Yeah. He's, a, he's a pick up any gun and shoot it well kind of yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah, there are those guys. You know, we burn into. Now, you know who the sneaky one here is? Is Lena. Lena. Because you talk about somebody who's grown up shooting. Yeah, shoot I everything. Mean, she's got good lineage, I hear. You think? <laughs> like, oh, let's see. Her mama, her daddy are, yeah. are both national champions. Her granddaddy was national champion. Her uncle. Yeah. Uncle, yeah. Uh, national champion. Uh, yeah. They they kind of do a lot of shooting around that, that household. Yeah, on, on shootout lane. They live on a on shootout, yeah. literally live on shootout lane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm telling you. And the other thing is, she may be the most competitive of the three. Yeah. She is like plugged into 220 volts all the time. Well, Jerry's so competitive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've I told you the story about Jerry when, when we uh, brought him into the Olympic Training Center. And I don't know if I've told you this. No. Huh? Yeah. We brought some of the Action Pistols guys into the Olympic Training Center. God, this is 15 years ago at least. And had them try Olympic pistol shooting, right? And it was a total clash of cultures. These guys... The Olympic guys are so slow right. when they're shooting this deal, and these guys come in, and they're taking all the guns apart. And these guys go, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm just trying to find the best parts and, and you know, get the ammo, and they're shooting. And these guys go, well, you're going to shoot up all our ammo. They said, what do you mean? I said, well, we only have so much ammo here. They said, well, they asked them, so, well, the Olympic guys, how much do you guys shoot, you know, regularly? They said, well, you know, we'll shoot uh, 10,000 rounds a year, a year. And they said, well, we shoot that in a week. Or, or at least, month, at least yeah. in a month. Yeah. You know, yeah. Going, and it's like, what? But so they were in there shooting, doing this competition, and I'm doing the radio show. And Jerry comes in, he's scheduled to build the radio show. Right. He comes in, he sits down, and he is ticked off. And I said, What's going on? No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, Jerry, what's, what happened here? He said, Well, you know, I'm shooting this, and I, you know, I dropped one target. I said, Well, this is just for fun. This isn't even a real just, thing. It's just a demo. It's just. A, <laughs> He looked at me like I had horns coming out of my head. He's like, you don't get it. He says, I want to beat them at everything. I don't care what it is. I want to beat all of them all the time. Yeah. Well, if I was playing tiddlywinks, I want to you, I want to you just squash them. I don't care. We're, we're <laughs> racing shopping carts. I don't care. <laughs> well, I want that W. I mean, that's the thing. With, with any top athlete, competitor, they've just got that in them where it's like, I want to crush the competition. Yep. Yep. You, and you got to be that way to get to that level. Yeah, and I see that in Lena, certainly. I was just out at Gunsight with her at a product introduction. They're doing the... Uh, the the nine, new 940 JM Pro, mm -hmm. that uh, three-gun shotgun. From Mossberg, yeah. From Mossberg. Amazing gun. Man, really nice. Uh, shoots great. But, man, she's she's something else. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm telling you, you might be able to get some odds on that one if you're... We are in Vegas. We are in Vegas. Well. You can, you can, I guarantee you can get a sports book, somebody to take this bet for you right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Call it in. You know, it's interesting because I actually floated that idea to somebody because... One of the reasons pro sports is so big is because of gambling. Absolutely, yes, and true. Yep. Is, has there ever been any kind of formal gambling on shooting competitions? No, not formal. I mean, I know they, you know, people at the club, the shooting club, will, they'll yeah. bet each other or whatever. But you know, it's really suited for it, where you could handicap, you know, whatever that is, action pistol, sure. long range rifle, you know, sporting clays. You that. could start. You could start having fantasy shooting leagues. 
fantasy, Ooh, fantasy sports. Yeah. I'm, I'm just throwing all these yes. ideas out on the airwaves. <laughs> yep. just, you're just giving away all this. I'm just yep. giving away something. All somebody's this gonna make a mint. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody over there's already gotten the website for it. He's, you know, oh, yeah. he's created yeah. it as we're talking here. <laughs> Hold on a second, guys. Take a quick break here. We're at uh, the Sig Range Day, but we're actually at Shot Show. We're talking a little bit about what's going on at Shot Show and some of the things we expect to see here because there've been a lot of product introductions and you guys have been doing a bunch of live videos on them and uh, people may not have caught all of that. So we'll talk about that when we come back. I'm Tom Gresham. We'll be right back with more gun talk. The Smith & Wesson m and 380 Shield EZ Pistol revolutionized personal protection with its easy-to-use design. Now, enter the m and Shield EZ in 9mm. Built for personal and home protection, the Smith & Wesson m and 9 Shield EZ Pistol features the same easy-to-rack, easy-to-load, and easy-to-shoot design of the m and Shield EZ series. Available at a retailer near you. Find out more at smith-wesson.com. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com that's ShopGunTalk.com. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. <laughs> The time is now to band together. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. Since 1979, Surefire has designed, machined, and assembled the finest flashlights, weapon-mounted lights, hearing protection, and suppressors right here in the U.S. Surefire, offering a best-in-class warranty and customer service, and used by more military special operations, SWAT teams, and hard-use end-users than any other brand. Surefire, American-built, American-strong. Visit Surefire.com. That's Surefire.com. All right, we're talking with uh, Ryan Gresham, Kevin Jarnigan, KJ joins us. Uh, we're at Shot Show, 2020, 2020. Wow, yeah, how about that? The future, Ooh, the future is here <laughs> in Vegas it is now. In the year 2020, <laughs> 60, 70 thousand people here. Uh, new products. Actually, a lot of products have been introduced over the last two months now. We've been doing a lot of stuff on that. Mm -hmm. So, And you guys have been doing some live videos where you do your live uh, broadcast on Facebook and YouTube? Yeah, we simulcast it there, yeah. and then we also put it out on our Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, all those places. But um, this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll be broadcasting live from SHOT Show uh, on the show floor, on video stuff, on YouTube, Facebook, yeah, we all got those places. We got booths set up there. We have cameras, just like like real TV and everything. Yeah, we got lights and everything. It's <laughs> fancy. The only thing that's going to be really different in like our regular lives and this live is that we're one on the show floor and two we're going to be in suits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you never what are suits. they doing yeah. here? Yeah, it's, who is this? It's it's the Super Bowl for us, so we got to you know, dress up a little bit. Yep. But we're going to have a variety of companies on. Um, ATN. ATN oh, Optics. They're coming. Oh, some cool. I thought you, I thought, oh, I thought you were talking oh, about oh, the uh, the football player, ATN. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's right. fast. He's, he yeah, is yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah, ATN Optics, thermal, night vision, all that stuff. They have just, I, they've been on such a roll for the past four or five years, bringing out really cool and for for thermal, pretty affordable. Oh, affordable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Feature rich. And they've got, it's like every year we go, whoa, that's cool. Yeah. And some of the stuff they sent us, the information on. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's really cool. Yeah. Okay. So people love that. Uh, Mantis, Mantis X, they do the trainers, um, little trainer devices that right. hook to your phone, help you with dry fire. 
Um, speaking of that, we're, dry fire. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we gotta get this in. Yes. So we were talking about, you know, this year I want to go out and take some more classes and you know get tuned up a little bit on our shooting. But we said, why don't we just make an effort to dry fire every day, five or ten minutes every day. Okay. So this is kind of an unofficial official thing that we're trying yeah. to get going this, here. The two, it, the two of you guys? Yeah, the two we, of us, and we're kind of inviting our listeners and viewers and everybody to okay. participate. join us, participate, post pictures on social media on the Gun Talk page. Right. And um, we're kind of getting this thing going to say, hey, let's all talk about, you know, how can we all get better this year, better, right. better at shooting. Right. And uh, so get out there and dry fire. Dry fire daily. Yeah. Every day. Sounds like a new newspaper. Yeah. Uh, dry fire does. daily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it goes back to, you know, it goes back to, you know, how many times do you draw from your concealment every day? Right. Um, and so we built, we're starting to build that in as we're growing this training, you know, dry fire well, training into our daily carrying. See, I like that because, I mean, I've always said I, I get two good draws in a day, every day, because when I put my gun on, I do at least one good practice draw, and then when, when I take it off, you got to take the gun off, I go ahead and, hey, it's, a, it's an opportunity to get a draw in. Not, It doesn't have to be super fast. Right. You're grooving good motion. You don't have to do it real fast. Yeah. You know, because you're, in my case, I'm doing it with a loaded gun. I'm okay with that, but I've got a place that I can aim where I know. Just as long as you're not yes. dry firing it, yeah. no, it yeah. won't be no, no, very dry. It's, it's a draw. It's not a dry fire. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's, let's get this. But yeah, no. The more draws, the more dry fires you can do, the better you are. But only if you're doing it with a purpose. It's yes. you know, just doing it over and over again. It's not getting you there. You got to think. Right. Okay, what am I working on right now? I want to work on pressing that trigger straight back without disturbing the sight right. each time. I'm going to work on whatever. But you got to be working on something. Otherwise, it's like the golfer who goes out and just whacks balls at the range. Sure. And you're not really practicing anything. Yeah. It may be you're messing grooving, around. You may be grooving bad habits. That's 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 Greg's line. We went now for the first time I ever shot with Greg Lapp, and he said. So, what do you guys want to do today? You want to just goof around and shoot and groove bad habits? You want to do some training? Yep. <laughs> well, 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 okay, Greg. When I you guess, put it that way. I guess we got to go do training exactly. now. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, but we're going to have uh, Galco gun leather on, HSM ammunition, Colt, of course, talking about. Oh, yeah, the, the Python. The Python. Yeah. Py Let's see. That's a big one. New stuff that's been coming out that you guys have already been talking about is uh, Python. Uh, Ruger's got their 5.7 pistol. Yeah. Which is so much fun. <laughs> really impressive. Uh, just this week, you did something on the new Springfield Army pistols. Yeah, you got yeah. to shoot the Elites. I got to shoot the XDM Elites, and they were phenomenal. Like, they are shooters. Yeah. Um, they're, I would say, man, they're less than... Uh, they're not. I don't know if they're quite carry guns, but no, they're, they're big shoot, guns. They're big guns. They're, big, they're kind of competition guns. Yeah, they yeah. are. They're really, Laird really are. well, and one of the big things is their trigger. Mm -hmm. They have a they have an improved trigger. In okay, there. cool. And um, and it so, is improved, man. It, that trigger yeah. is their meta trigger, meta. their match enhanced trigger assembly. Okay, yeah. how do people if they want to? S keep up with what's going on because there's all this stuff going on shot and also if something breaks and we hear about something we'll run over and do another video on that sure it's not a case of where people can make an appointment they have to have signed in so they get the notifications of these right. videos correct so how, so do you do, how do you do that if you like the gun talk facebook page and you sign up for be to be notified when we go live it's just like a little button you click okay. or on youtube you, uh, what they say, ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring yeah, that bell. There's a little bell, literally an icon for yes. a bell. You click on that, and then it will send you a notification, hey, Gun Talk's about to go live, right? Yep. Right. That's it. And so, and we're going to be setting up there. And you can also ask questions. That's well, the cool part. That's the cool part. Yeah. While, we're, while the video's going on, while you're interviewing people, people say, KJ, ask them about this. What's this thing, Ryan? What, right. What's going on? We'll try to get those questions answered for you right there. Yeah. On the spot, cool. from the horse's mouth. And that's going to be <laughs> Thursday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? Yes. Correct. Of this week. This week. From the SHOT Show, from Vegas. So we'll be doing that. So go, you got to go to Facebook right now. Look for Gun Talk Media and YouTube. Same thing, Gun yeah. Talk Media. Sign up for the notifications, and then you'll find out about that deal. All right. All right, don't go anywhere, guys. They're going to bring you back in just a second here because we got a little bit more going on from SHOT Show where we're going to get together with, I don't know, 60,000 of our friends. And, oh, yes, you're going to need five gallons of hand sanitizer while you're here because <laughs> oh. you're shaking hands with everybody. <laughs> 866 Talk Gun. I'm Tom Gresh. I'll be right back. And we're back.
back. <laughs> We're having some fun over here. Uh, well, Jim is sending us uh, pictures of his target and his success with dry firing. Mm -hmm. A target with no holes in it. That's your dry firing target, yep. right? <laughs> he, he got every one of them, yep. too. Man. You, know, you know what the best part of that Spot is? On. You can use the same target every day. Every you never day. use it up. That's yeah. right. It's, it's perfect. Okay, so the, all right. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about uh, all of the uh, videos we're going to be doing here, the live feeds and all of that. Who else you got lined up? Well, we got Air Venturi, which they're always fun. I just saw an announcement from them the other day that they have an M1A pellet gun. Yes. Really? BB gun. Oh, cool. Pellet gun. It's yeah. an M1A. That's cool. Yeah. Why, why not? It's really fun. Um, Taurus is going to show off what they've got going on. They, they, just, they just announced today they've got a new revolver, so we'll be uh, talking about that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Palmetto State Armory and Palmetto State Armory. Um, oh, you, you went out there and visited those guys. They they make all their stuff. They make yeah. it all. And they are actually people don't know they're one of the biggest AR makers. They crank them out. There's also um, there's this mad scientist guy um, that works for them, uh, Derek mm -hmm. um, from Lead Star. Yeah. And Lead Star is kind of like their little Pretty skunk works ridiculous. area. The guns are all just tricked out. They're skeletonized, gorgeous. and this uh, is not the, the you know, Palmetto State Armory is known for, you know, r pretty expen inexpensive, right. great deals right. on stuff. Right. This is not that. This is the high-end stuff for them. Really? And they've given him, like, this lab I would go into, and it's Derek and a few other master machinists, and he's, you could tell it's, wow. it, it's like a, it's a laboratory. Wow. And they're just, they're making stuff. They've got CNC machines. They've got all this. So you're going to be talking to those guys here as yeah. well. Yeah, we'll be talking about on um this this week, okay. The um, go fast guns. The go fast guns. <laughs> lockdown. Lockdown oh, that's interesting. is yeah. interesting. Yes. You, tell them about the the lockdown so, puck. It's a puck that you put in your safe, and it'll alert you, like via Bluetooth, about you know if your safe's uh, damaged in any way, the humidity levels of it, the temperature, the temperature. <laughs> I mean, everything. If, if something's if messing some, with your somebody, door. Somebody's trying to open the door. It your safe, motion. It sends yeah. you a note on your phone. Hey, somebody's breaking into your, it's your, fascinating. your gun safe. It's, it's brilliant. It's a way to safety your safe. Well, when you're away <laughs> from the house or, right. or, you know, you, or you have, like, you know, a vacation home or right. something. But also, even if you just, you're not away from the house, but it lets you know, like, hey, maybe it's getting humid in your safe. And you could set yes. alerts yeah. to go, hey, the humidity has gotten up or the right. and has gotten up or whatever. And, and if you're in the south, like we are, man. Humidity, humidity is rust, baby. Kills and, it. and rust yeah. is the worst oh. thing that happened to a gun. Yeah. So that's kind of a neat one. Yeah. Um, FN's coming on, and, and uh, just, it's going to be fun. We, and we got a few other people. We got high caliber history. Logan, you know, he does some cool stuff. We're, Steven. We're going to, well, yep. We're going to be presenting the Grits Gresham Shooting Communicator Award to somebody. This week, which you, you almost gave away, <laughs> <laughs> which we can't talk about yet. Not yet. And it's not Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he'll be at the show, though. Oh, yeah. he has There's been, always, there's it is always funny. someone. Lou Ferrigno, you always see yep, Lou here. Lou Ferrigno, you know who else? Incredible Hulk. You know who else is always here every year? Trump, Don Trump. Yep. Junior, oh, Don, Junior. Don, Don, Don Junior. Junior is always here. Yeah. I, bet, I bet. I bet Chuck he, Norris will be here too. Chuck Norris, yeah. yeah. Don <laughs> Junior just goes into the booths and just plays with guns. He's like, yeah. man, this is cool. He's, he's a gun guy. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's like a real guy. He yeah. geeks out just like all of us do. Yeah. On exactly. The gun right. That's very cool. I think maybe he's got you know his daddy's ear, which is a good thing for us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, as well. All right, guys. So uh, hand sanitizer. You got to get through this week without <laughs> getting the shot show crud, which you That's tend right. to get. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hyd hydrate because we're in the desert. Emergency. Emergency, all the rest of it. And in the meantime, uh, if you're going to be in Virginia, behave yourself. All right. Good and, luck uh, out there. Yeah, we'll be uh, reporting on that through Twitter. You can follow me. I am at Gun Talk on Twitter. We'll be talking about that. Don't forget to tune in to all these videos we're doing here because you'll be the first to know what's happening at Shot Show. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate you being here. All righty. Go out, do a little bit of shooting, do a little Second Amendment activism, take somebody shooting with you. That's the best way.